Hello guys and welcome to another tutorial about how to uh, render your huge huge ZBrush file in Blender. Okay, we're going to talk about a few tricks that we can make it work uh, to get the best quality we can get and without a lot of effort of doing things like retopologizing, texturing, everything. We just get what we have from ZBrush since like high poly model and poly paint everything into Blender because it's kind of able to handle it anyways and it has a better render EV, right? Uh, ZBrush has, has its own render, but it's 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 always lacking of some features compared to uh, uh, those get dedicated renders, right? For things like, uh, you know, uh, volumetric lighting or things like that. ZBrush just, just doesn't have that, okay? Uh, all right. So to get it to work, then we need to use actually a, uh, a plugin, a plugin. Uh, if you go to Google search and you search for this thing uh, called Gobi, so what you do is you search for Blender Gobi, ignore those things, right? Scroll down to the GitHub version from Ho Jose Concedo, Concico, right? Go there and then click on the code and download it. Okay, it's a Python project. Uh, when it's finished, you'll get this, right? You right click and then extract. Okay, you have this Gobi master. Double click to open it and let's rename this guy to just Gobi and copy it, copy this file and then you move to where you you, you install Blender. So it's gonna be underneath uh, uh, C drive, uh, default setting of course, C drive, program files, and then Blender foundation, Blender 2.9.1, 2.9.1, Python, oh not Python. <laughs> scripts, add-ons, and that's all the add-ons, right? They're all listed in here. So all you have to do is control V to paste this in here and say continue. And I should put go B in there. Okay. When you're finished with that, you can try to go to edit preferences. And then you look for add-ons and search for go B. Okay, if it's not in there, then we'll have to let's see if we can just refresh it. Yeah, if we refresh it, you can see now we have this Gobi in it, added in. Just check that out. Okay, and that's gonna check that out. And it doesn't know where ZBrush is, so you have to also tell it where ZBrush is. So again, uh, program files, pixel logic, ZBrush, and then we'll look for, oh, look for ZBrush yeah, here. Accept. Okay, all right, and Moving on down here to the input, let's just set it up real quick, right? So we're going to import from polypaint because we don't have texture, we only have polypaint. And we also wanted to have the poly groups to vertex groups. It's easier for us to make selections and assign material differently if we wanted to be able to uh, get access to poly group that we have in ZBrush. So everything checked out, right? And then change that to polypaint. And that should be everything, right? And then we're just going to close this guy. And then you you can create anything like a, a mesh, for example, a UV sphere. Right, we don't need to do anything; just have something in here. And also, let's have ZBrush open. Uh, okay. ZBrush open. Uh, drag it over here. So with ZBrush open, then we can go back here to Blender and say, grab the model and hit export. Okay, you can see now we're instantly jump to ZBrush. I can drag out the sphere. Oh, hit F button. Oh, don't know why it also gave me a cube, <laughs> but we have the sphere in here, right? That's the sphere from Blender. Uh, we can, uh, of course, drag it. And then we can go to the uh, reset and choose Blender now. Okay, I don't have anything else. Just reset and choose Blender, right? Um, hit Go Z and continue, right? And then you go back to Blender and you hit Input and you can see it's already imported, right? That's the thing we did in, in ZBrush. Okay, uh, if you toggle that on, right, it's always going to detect the difference. So let me delete this. Back here to ZBrush, I can find anything else, for example, uh, like this hat and I can go Z right away 
right? When this is finished, you can see it's already in Blender, so this is really fluent. All right, click that out. So of course I want to work on my own scene, so I'm gonna go to my recent project and open that. Okay. So I have a, I have a fairly big scene, uh, as you can see, and not just this guy though. <laughs> I have this whole scene here. Uh, so I want to get this whole thing into Blender. However, this is probably too dense for Blender to handle because ZBrush can always handle more polygons, right? Even it has a performance issue sometimes, but it's able to handle it. Okay. Uh, so we'll have to do some preparations for our model to work uh, because we can't really bring in millions and millions of polygons. That wouldn't really... Uh, Blender can still handle quite a, quite a few like tens of millions of polygons, it's able to handle that. But for a big ZBrush project, you can reach it to like 80 million or even if not more. So that's when Blender is now able to, to handle it nicely. So we'll have to reduce the polygon, right? This is something we, we can do to help. So uh, I have this environment down here, right, this guy. You can see this, this one has uh, a little short of 1 million polygons. If you take a look at the polygon, you can see this is actually a decimated model. Okay, so I want to bring our model to this kind of like decimated polypaint state before we move to Blender. Okay, let me show you how to achieve this. Okay, I have this environment here. This one, however, is... Oh, I had all these guys. <laughs> and... Huh, I have some weapons in there. Okay, so... This is the original environment. If you look at the rock, you can see, well, it does have 3 million polygons, right? And there is also a plate that has um, 25, 249K. The flowers, oh yeah, they're already simplified. So that's on only 250K, okay. All right, so you want to bring your model to a lower enough resolution. So let's do that on the rock then. They haven't been simplified yet. That's three million, which Blender can still handle it. It's just going to be a little bit slow. It's not going to be even slow if you just bring those guys in. It can be quite fast in there actually, but it's going to get really slow when you bring in millions and millions and millions of polygons. <laughs> that's when it's really hacking up. So if you have a model that's just a few million, like three, four million, ten million, it's fun. Do it right away. You don't have to do what I'm doing here. But I have a lot of things. Right? If all of them are you know, three, four, five millions, they adds up and becomes too big. So that's when you really need to think about how to simplify this. But again, if yours is only something like 10 million, it's fine. Blender can handle it, no problem. Okay, anyway, so uh, let me show you how we can simplify this, right? So I have this rock here that's three million. All I have to do is go to Z plugin, Decimation Master. And then, of course, I want to keep the polypen. And then I also I want to kind of like define a polycon I want to go for. Okay, uh, I guess 1,000 or K, which is 1 million, could be better than 3 million, right? Uh, but let me go for a little bit lower than that. Mm. 700 K, right? And then I'm gonna go, go click on the custom button. This is gonna uh, re-evaluate the model and decimate it into just 700 million, uh, not million, 700 K polygons. Uh, because we have checked to keep the polypaint, it's also going to keep the polypaint quite nicely. So we probably wouldn't lose a lot of detail at all. Uh, from this, this distance, there shouldn't be much difference. Okay. Right, of course, decimation will take some time, so let me pause the video. All right, my decimation is over. Um, before it was having materials, so now I have to change it back. Anyway, now you can see, well, there is not that much different, right, with 700 uh, polygons. This one is 249. Uh, let me just do that again, simplify it also as well. Let me reset my UI here. And let me delete subdivision levels and then go for. Let me save this. Yeah, I'm gonna go for a uh, another decimation master for this one I'm gonna go for let me try 150k you can just click on the numbers to reduce okay this should be faster yeah okay all right uh, 
let me just maybe reduce it even further this, this is not a lot of things so let me try 75k yeah it still holds up okay all right so i have that and then that's all three of my environment things right let me grab the folder and say uh, merge folder that's gonna give me a merged version that's the whole environment a little short uh higher than 1 million but that's fine right that's something uh blender can easily handle okay so with this selected then you can go click on the go z just to test it okay click on go z now and continue and this will uh, export this guy and get into blender all automatically okay you have to wait for this to say file save to disk successfully then you can go back to blender you can see blender is also already trying to read it okay so basically you do that on all the models until they're all in blender or you can do them uh you can do everything needed to be done in zbrush first and you you just you know do all these uh, cozy things but i think it's easier to do one thing click on cozy let blender do its do its thing on the background and you move on to the next next thing right that way it's easier for you to to get everything in uh, faster without have to wait for blender okay all right now it's in blender already right we can hold down z and go to rendered mode okay you can see now this is really fast. You don't see any lag at all. Right? I think part of the reason is because uh, this is using um, uh, using uh, the video card. So this is like no lagging at all. It's faster than ZBrush, as you can see in ZBrush. I can still rotate it, no problem, but it's kind of like a little slow. Okay, even solo it, right? In Blender, this, this is instant feedback. Now to set this up, of course, we, what we can do is go to the uh, material, okay, grab the model. Now, I'm not sure why it doesn't give me a material for some reason. It should should give me some material. Anyway, if it doesn't give me one, I just get add a new one here, right? And then click on new, and then in the base color, I'm going to choose vertex color. That's going to give me all the vertex color here, okay? Of course, there's something that needs to be different. For example, maybe I want the rock to be shinier like that. But maybe not the dirt and the flowers. How can I do that? Okay. Um, if you go to the, uh, you just hit the tab button to go to the component mode or edit mode, which will take some time <laughs> for like a model that has 1 million uh, polygons. Let me click in the empty space to deselect everything. And then I'm going to go hit 3 to choose to go to the face mode, right? And then I'm going to go for uh, the uh, object data. You can see that's all the vertex groups. That's all the poly groups we have uh, uh, assigned in ZBrush. Okay, so if I go select this one, you can see that's the rocks. Okay, all right, and then I'm gonna go to the material, create a new material, give the new description, and then assign it to the current selection. That's gonna make this material to be applied to the rock. We can hit tap button now to go back. You can see now the rock is using this material. I'm gonna call this one rock. And these ones are others. <laughs> others. Okay, anyway, so rock is in here. And I guess for the rock, I can also choose the vertex color, right? But I can then define like, I want the rock to have some more shinier material I can do that now okay for the others I can then say okay you're not gonna be as shiny so I can crack that up okay right, like I can differentiate the materials uh, of course uh, if I wanted to I can also say well let's let's make it not having all those hard edges right to do that all we have to do is go to the object settings okay no more and check out auto smooth uh, that wouldn't do it yet. You also have to go to the object and change it to um, uh, shader smooth to make it uh, to be viewed as a smooth model. Okay, and this is going to be all the setup needed for the environment here. Uh, the rest of the things will be you tweaking it, right? but it's basically it. Uh, okay, let me maybe uh, do one more. I have a lot of things in here, but I guess I can get the I have 
finish do I have the body here Maybe the griffin. Yeah, those are all done the same way you can see, right? Decimated. So I don't have the original model anymore actually. <laughs> so those are all we have, all I have in this file. But you can see the human being here. The human body is 1.6 million. Because I want to get all the data in there. I have polypens, I have uh, sculpted facial details. So I want all these things to be in there. So 1.6 million for the body. Um, so you don't need to do anything other than after you did all the cleanup, right? All the decimation, just click on the go Z again, right? And continue. I guess Blender is still having trouble getting all those things. I need to change that number. But you know, this is not that bad anyways. <laughs> Let's not do that anymore. I think because the brush is already doing the, that's. Uh, if, if Blender doesn't really work, oh, sometimes <laughs> like this, you click on the import and again, it should be able to pick up the new things. Uh, basically, what, what they're doing is just having a directory. They keep transferring file back and forth, All right? So uh, if it doesn't update, you just click on the import again, toggle it down and off, and that's going to import in the new model again. Okay. Um, right. So. If you don't have a lot of models, this shouldn't be too hard, but uh, when I'm doing it myself, I have a lot of things. So I need to combine uh, quite a few things, like for example, uh, these three things are combined. You know, those clothing are combined, right? So those things uh, are organized first before uh, transferring over. Right, all those things. So you have to Organize your file, otherwise it's gonna take you. Uh, it's gonna make the model too big, and right? all those things. So you really have to deal with uh, uh, size and everything. Yeah. But now the body is in, right? Let me uh, grab the line, hit G button, and drag it over. You can see how performant this is, right? Even with like a super high-res model, it's able to do quite well, right? And this one is having the material or uh, vertex color already assigned. Uh, the reason being is because it doesn't have the polygroup. I guess if you have the polygroup, it doesn't know how to create materials. So if this one doesn't have that much of a polygroup, it's able to just use it right away. Okay, so uh, that's good to know, right? In the material part, uh, grab the model and in the material part, uh, for this one, we can uh, toggle subsurface scattering on. Okay, oh, that's too much. <laughs> right, you can see this is really performant. The zero five maybe is enough, right? Because we got really nice real time feedback for for this. Okay, so let me uh, get everything in and pause the video while I'm doing that. Alrighty, so everything is in. Takes uh you know around ten minutes to go, but it shouldn't be too hard. And then uh, there are some missing materials, probably because I have different polygroups. When you have multiple polygroups. Uh, it's gonna have in trouble creating materials. So uh, if you don't really care about polygroup, one thing that can make it better is in go to the preferences here, right? In the Kobe, uh, just don't check that on. If you don't check that on, then it's always gonna be able to create a material for you. Okay. Uh, so one thing that's worth noting. All right, for the Griffin, for example, I <laughs> lost the material at all. It doesn't have anything. So I'm gonna add one here and then new, no problem, base color, vertex color, and that's all you have to do. Uh, for anything that's missing. This one actually works for some reason. <laughs> it does have multiple polygroups. Okay. And this shield is not working, right? So let's do that. Um, so I'm gonna go give it a material and then a new, and this was, I'm gonna name this one wood. Okay. And then color will be vertex color. And that's for the wood, so roughness will kind of be high. But the rest of the things should be metal, right? Should be metal. So I need to go to the uh, polygroup here, right? I'm gonna grab this guy. 
Oh, I should have to go to the component mode by hitting the tab button. Click somewhere else to clear your selection. Uh, you can go click on select to select. And uh, you can see I'm selecting the wood. <laughs> so click on there and then maybe choose this one and then select. Yeah, now I have the the, the wood faces. Okay, I'm going to go to the material here and then I'm going to add a, a new material. New. Assign. Right, and I'm gonna name this metal, and that's gonna be applied to the current selected faces. Let me hit Tab button to disable that. You can see now I can go to the base color and choose vertex color. Okay, you can see now that's assigning the color. And then very important for anything that's model, you that's metal, you drag on the metallic up. Okay, and that's gonna make it more metallic looking. Okay, and of course you can also tweak things like the uh, roughness to make it even more shinier right and yeah the same thing can go for this one now i have one material but i need a a leather one and a metal one so basically the same process right so let me see uh, i'm just gonna try to guess this is a higher resolution i guess that's the wood okay so i'm gonna select that Oh, that's actually the, the leather. <laughs> okay, well, no problem. Go to the materials. I'm going to add a new one. Okay, assign. Don't forget to do that. And then I'm going to call this guy leather. Okay, and then click to deselect that. And then let me just do another one. That's the wood. Okay. New. And then a sun, and this will be wood, and then this one has to be metal. Okay, and then I just need to go ahead and set up the material here that's already set up. The leather one, I also have to use the vertex color. Wood one will also use vertex color. Okay, now I, I, I think the wood one can have a higher roughness. Uh, leather one can have a little bit lesser roughness. It's hard to tell in this case. Let me uh, move this light away a little bit. Uh, oh. Yeah, move this away. Alright, that's easier to see now. So grab that and go to the leather material. Right, let's see. can see the highlights is changing I think I think yeah somewhere around point five is not bad at all go to metal now metal is the one that needs a lot of tweak right so metallic needs to be all the way up to one and then we can also tweak the roughness right to make it shinier yeah I think that's good enough all right and I guess this one is the last one I need to tweak the metallic on Maybe I can make it not all that metallic. Okay. Oh, don't know. This feels like plastic now. <laughs> uh, maybe it's the the roughness thing. So. Okay. All right. Yeah. So this is gonna be the basic uh process of bringing things from uh, ZBrush to Blender, as you can see still right really fast and no lagging at all <laughs> right that's amazing uh, i guess this is the power of the graphic card okay so that's the first video and in the next one we're going to talk about some of the basic uh, tricks that we can do to set up lightings to render this in blender okay see you next